Hey guys, so now that we've talked about how to combine a vector, I want to go over the opposite process. I want to go over vector decomposition, where we're going to get a vector and split it up into its x and y components. So let's get started. So two vectors can only be combined, and they can only be combined in these two situations here. First, if they lie on the same axis, they're both x or y. We did this earlier, so if they're both in the x-axis, something like a 3 with a 4, becomes a 7 or something like a if you think of this as a force a force of 3 pulls up and a force of negative 4 going down pulls down then this is the same thing as 3 up tip to tail negative 4 down which gives me the net result the net force of 1 going down Okay, so I can combine vectors that way. Um, I can also combine vectors if one is in the x and one is on the y axis. So something like this, I got a, let's say a equals three, and then a b equals four. Then I can show you that this c over here is five. And the magnitude of c is given by Pythagorean theorem and the angle of C is the arc tangent of Y over X, in this case, B over A, but I'm gonna write Y over X because that's what I want you guys to remember, okay? Now, those two cases are the base cases, but if the vector is, is at an angle, right? So the vector is not in the X axis, it's not in the Y axis, it's at an angle like this, it must first be decomposed into its x and y components, into its x and y legs, okay? And it looks something like this. This is the x and y components that we want. So first I'm gonna do this visually without any math, um, and then we're gonna do this with math. So here each square represents one meter, so this is one meter each, so I can count them um, and see how long these things will be. So I wanna find the x and y components of the vector shown. So here's the idea. Imagine that I'm moving from this point to this point over here. I can represent this with motion in the x-axis and the y-axis instead. I can say this motion here, the black arrow, is the same thing as this, plus this. This bottom guy here is called the x component of that vector. So if I say that this vector, if I call this vector a, this leg here is ax, right? It's the base of the triangle that I formed and AY is the height of the triangle that I just formed. In this case, I can count the little squares. There's one, two, three here. So this is three, it's going to the right. Remember, up and to the right is positive. That's my standard notation there. Um, three, positive three, just to be clear. And this is one, two, three, four, positive four. Now I wanna find the magnitude and direction, right? And the magnitude of A, remember magnitude notation, uh, magnitude of a vector is the, has the absolute value notation. Here it's the, uh, the square root of x, AX squared plus AY squared. So these are the components of A, and if you combine this, you get five, three, four, five triangle. Um, and then the angle of A, which is this guy over here, is the arc tangent of Y over X. In this case, AY, over AX. So this is the arc tangent of 4 over 3, and that is 53. Okay? Um, I'm going to call this guy B, and I want to find the X and Y components of B. Again, going down this way, now there's two options here. I could go like this, or I could go like this. We're going to pick the first choice because we want our, vec our angle, when we make a vector, to be against the x-axis over here. So we're always going to want this angle to be against the x-axis. So let me erase this. And we're going to do this. This is called the, this is bx, which is the x component of the vector. And this is by. bx, if you count, is positive 4, 4 to the right. by is 3 down, so it's negative 3. And this is B, I could put a B here. And the magnitude of B 
is the square root of its components squared. Uh, doesn't matter the order, but I just want to be consistent here. X squared and Y squared. It doesn't matter that this is negative. I could have plugged in as a positive, make it a little faster um, because it's squared anyway, but I just wanted to be more precise there. So you see that this is the same number as this. All right, and then the angle theta B here is the arc tangent of Y over X. The Y value is negative three and the X value is positive four. Put this in the calculator very carefully and you're gonna get a negative 37, okay? It should make sense to you that this is a negative angle. Remember, um, an angle over here is a positive angle and then angles over in this direction are negative angles and we'll be talking about that more later. Okay, so negative in here means below the x-axis. Cool. The problem is uh, vectors aren't going to fall in this pretty grids that you can just count them. Um, so instead, we're going to usually use trigonometry to calculate vector components, these x and y components. Let's do one. You walk six meters to the right, then you walk five meters directed at 37 degrees above the positive x-axis. Let's draw this real quick. So. I'm going to try to make this kind of big so we have a lot of space. I'm going to call this first leg here A equals 6. And then tip to tail, I'm just going to connect these things, right? Then I'm going to walk um, 5 like this. And this is B equals 5. Um, cool. And then I want to know what is the total displacement. So total displacement is an arrow from the very beginning to the very end, it looks like this. And I'm gonna call that arrow C. And I can say that because C is the combination of A to B, I can say that C is the vector addition of A plus B. It's not gonna be 11, right? That's silly. So, all right, remember what we just talked about. If a vector is at an angle, it has to be decomposed into its components. So this B here, has to be changed into bx and by. Let me make this a different color here. So this is my bx and this is my by. Okay? Now, the way I'm going to do this is using, once again, Sokotoa. Okay? And bx is going to be b cosine of theta. And by is going to be b sine of theta. Okay? And x is going to go with cosine most of the time. So you can just remember that. And y is going to go with sine. Okay. b is the length of b, which is 5. Cosine of theta. The angle here for b is... 37 above, so it's right there. Cosine of 37. And if you do this carefully in your calculator in degrees, you should get that this is positive 4. I'm going to put a positive there um, just to be clear that it's going to the right. So this is positive 4. By is 5 sine of 37, which is positive 3. Right? It's going up. So that's it. I found my B. Now we can figure out C, right? Now that I have all the legs, instead of one way you can think about this, instead of going 6 and then 5, you can think of it as going 6, then 4, then 3. Where did I get these numbers from? 6, 4, and 3, okay? Every problem in physics that has anything going at an angle will be split into X and Y components, and that way we make our lives easier. And this is your C vector right here. Okay? So if I want to redraw my C vector, it's a triangle like this. And this number here, this length here is 10. That is my CX. And this length here is my, is my CY, which is 3. And if I want to find the magnitude in the angle of C, I can just go back to our Pythagorean theorem and SOHCAHTOA, right? So C is the square root of CX squared plus CY squared. If you plug in all these numbers, 10 and 3, they're both positive. If you plug them in very carefully, you get 10.4. 
And the angle of C is the arc tangent of Y over X, so CY over CX. And again, if you plug this very carefully, you get 16.7 degrees, and that is the final answer here. This process is called vector addition, um, and we're doing this graphically, right, by drawing um, your path. So one thing that I want to point out, and we'll talk about this more later, is one, uh, is that if your angle is one against the x-axis, or two, if it is the absolute angle, so if your angle is either against the x-axis, which looks like that, or if it's the absolute angle, absolute angle, and we'll talk about this more later, is the angle that is relative to zero degrees. And zero degrees is right here. So an absolute angle would look like this. Let me do it real quick. Let's say this angle here is 30. Then your absolute angle would be 180 plus 30, 210. Those two angles are the same, right? 30 coming off here is the same as 210 coming off of here. Wow, that was intense. All right, so if you have these two situations, you're against the x-axis, so you have the absolute angle. Ax will always be a cosine of theta, and Ay will always be a sine of theta, okay? And you should absolutely memorize these. These come from Sokotoa. I didn't derive it. Um, your professor probably did. Your book certainly does. And my recommendation is rather than deriving it every time, you just memorize these. You're going to be doing this stuff hundreds of times, right? You don't want to screw it up. So x goes with cosine, and y goes with sine. Like I said, we'll talk about this a little bit more later. So remember that forces are also vectors, so we can also decompose forces into x and y components. So for example, if you have a force that goes at an angle like this, this is f and theta, I can decompose that f into its x component fx, and its y component fy. And remember that this is the same thing as if you had um, a box being pulled by a force fx this way. And I can draw this fy to the left over here, and it would look like this. These are the same situations, right? So anyway, it says here, a force of 10 is applied at an angle of 37 degrees. So it's exactly the same situation here. I'm just going to draw it again, but now with numbers. Force of 10, 37 degrees below. Oh, it's actually below the positive x-axis. Whoops. So below the positive x-axis. Let me draw the x and y axes here. Uh, this is positive axis. I want it to be below, so it looks like this. Boom. And if this force is 10, and this angle is 37, this is below the x-axis, so it's negative 37. Right? Notice how here they don't tell you that it's a negative angle. You have to figure that out yourself. Um, forces have um, uh, units, uh, the unit of force is Newton. So I want to know what is the x and y component. So again, the way to do this, I'm going to get this angle out of there because we really can't draw there. Let me just do this. Is fx, whoops, fx looks like this. And Fy looks like this if you want to draw it, right? So that's decomposing the vectors and makes it a little triangle. And this is Fy, not Fx. And then Fx is F cosine of theta. And Fy is F sine of theta. I can just plug in the numbers. F is 10 cosine of negative 37. This gives you a positive 8, which makes sense because you're going to the right. And the calculator knows that. Um, and then this is 10 sine of negative 37, and the calculator gives you a negative 6, so the calculator knows that this is going down somehow, okay? The signs make sense. You always want to get the answer, look at your, plug the answers into the diagram and see if the numbers make sense, if the signs make sense. Anyway, that's it for this one. Let's jump into the next one.